Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be using the FET Interactive Simulations from the University of Colorado to show you some compounds, to show you the electronegativity of the different um, elements in the compounds and how that's going to affect the polarity of a molecule. This is a really, really good simulation um, and you need to have a really, really solid understanding of this in your head. And the only way you can do this is by practicing. So if you want to know practice questions, you can go and get that from my workbook, which is over on my website. This is the FET Molecule Polarity Simulator. You can see there are lots of different options down the side here. Now, not all of these are incredibly useful. The ones that I think are most useful are going to be the molecular dipole and the atom electronegativity. So that just gives you this bit down here. It shows you the difference in the actual number of electronegativity. Here is the list of compounds that we're going to go through. I'm going to go through all of these in case you don't have access to um, FET, but if you do have access to FET, please go and have a look at this for yourself. So here we have hydrogen fluoride. You can see that the fluorine here, much higher number, much higher blob they've given it on FET, it is much more electronegative. So our, ele um, our molecule dipole is going to be in this direction. This end is going to be much more negative than this end. If we turn on the electrostatic potential, now I'm going to be turning this on and off because I think it obscures some of the information a little bit. You can see that red is negative, blue is positive. So this end is much more negative than this end over here. Next compound hydrogen. Now hydrogen, both of these are the same. There's no difference in the electronegativities between these. So you can see there's no overall dipole. If you look at the electrostatic potential, there's no area of this which is more negative or no area which is more positive. So it is going to have no overall dipole for this one. Moving on to nitrogen. Now nitrogen is a pretty electronegative molecule. But because both of them are equally as electronegative as each other, there is going to be no overall dipole for this molecule. Oxygen, again, oxygen is very electronegative, but because they are each as electronegative as each other, there's going to be no overall um, dipole for this molecule. The same with fluorine, incredibly electronegative, but because they are both the same in their electronegative potential, they are not going to have any overall dipole for this compound. Hydrogen fluoride, that's the one we started with, water. Now water, you can see oxygen is very electronegative. Hydrogen is not very electronegative, so our dipole is going to be moving in this direction. If we look at the electrostatic potential, you can see this area is much more negative than these areas down here where they are positive. Carbon dioxide. This is really, really um, good example of what's going on here because oxygen is very electronegative. Carbon is less electronegative. So what we are going to have is these areas down here being negative, the area in the middle being positive. If I just get rid of that for a second, you'll see there is no overall molecule dipole because the two areas of negativity, either side of the area of positivity, cancel each other out. So even though there are individual dipoles, if I just switch that to bond dipoles on, you can see there's a bond dipole there and a bond dipole there, there is no overall molecule dipole for carbon dioxide. Hydrogen cyanide, you can see here nitrogen is very electronegative, so everything's going to be drawn in this direction. Here is our molecule dipole. Turning on the electrostatic um, potential, this area is very negative, and this area, the poor tiny hydrogen over there, is very positive. 
here we have ozone here I'll just turn off that now because of the the molecule geometry of this a bit of a dipole going on here because both um, all of them are very electronegative but these two oxygens oxygen one and oxygen three are bent down towards each other so this end of the molecule is going to be more negative than this end of the molecule over here but it is a very slight subtle one with ozone ammonia we can see that we have our three hydrogens down there with our uh, molecule dipole going up there the electrostatic potential if we look at it is negative on the bottom uh, sorry positive on the bottom and then the red negative up the top so our molecule dipole is going in that direction there looking at our next one Borane, I'll take off the electronegative potential. You can see, especially if we look at the numbers, there's not a great difference in the atom electronegativities between all of these. So there is no um, overall molecule dipole, and there is a slight bond dipole, but not very much. If we look at the electrostatic potential, again, you can see slight changes in colours towards the um, hydrogen which is the more electronegative one if we look at the numbers but it is only slight. Boron trifluoride. Now fluorine is extremely electronegative. If we pop on our electrostatic potential, you can see here that each fluorine is negative, but there is no overall molecule um, dipole, just three individual bond dipoles because the the fact that there's three of them going in different directions, three negative edges and a big positive bit in the middle cancels out any molecular dipole that there might be. Formaldehyde here, here we have oxygen up the top on its own, very, very electronegative. So our molecular dipole is going to be moving in this direction. Looking at the electrostatic potential, you can see this big area of negativity up here and then the area of positivity down the bottom. Methane here, now there is not a large difference in the numbers between methane and um, between carbon and hydrogen and it is also balanced out all over the place. There is no um, molecule dipole and there are going to be slight bond dipoles with this. If we look at the electrostatic potential, you can see that the hydrogens are ever so slightly coloured in blue and the carbon is ever so slightly coloured in um, red for negative, but the effects cancel each other out. Fluoromethane here. Now fluorine is highly electronegative and if we have our three hydrogens down there at the bottom you can see that the molecule dipole is moving in this direction up towards the fluorine. Turning on the electrostatic potential you can see this massive area of negativity up here and this area of positivity down here encompassing the three hydrogens. Difluoroethane, here we have two, difluoromethane, sorry, here we have two hydrogens um, down here. If we turn those around so it's in the same geometry as the last one with them at the top, if I can get them at the top, you can see our bond uh, molecule geometry is moving in this direction here. Turn on the electrostatic potential and you can see that the negativity up here uh, surrounding the fluorines and then the positivity down here surrounding the hydrogens. Trifluoromethane now, so three of the hydrogens have been replaced with fluorine. Again, we have this rather large, rather um, powerful dipole now going on here as we have three fluorines dragging the electrons down towards the bottom and then this tiny little hydrogen sitting up here at the top.
tetrafluoride methane where all of the hydrogens have been replaced um, all of the hydrogens have been replaced with fluorines so this one is going to have no overall dipole even though there are going to be individual bond dipoles with the electrons moving out from the carbon to the fluorine there's going to be no overall molecule dipole because each of the um, negative impacts of the fluorines are going to be balanced out by one another. So you're going to get no overall molecule dipole with this one. Last one here, chloroform, where we have three of the chlorines being replaced, three of the hydrogens being replaced by the chlorine. So our bond molecule dipole is going to be going downwards in this direction looking at the electrostatic potential we can see that it is negative down this side and here is our tiny little hydrogen poking its head out the top the last um, vestige of positivity in a sea of negativity so those are all the real molecules that they have on here you can also go and play around making your own molecules with three atoms or with two atoms but I do strongly strongly suggest that if you can you go and play around with this for yourself because it will give you a really really good understanding of how electronegativity and bond dipoles work